Greetings everyone and welcome back. Here's something fun and classic. The PVM Panda, a custom 3D printed all-in-one PC inspired by the Sony PVM or professional video monitor. The heart of this project is the Latte Panda MU single board computer paired with a 7-inch EDP IPS display. Our goal was to put together a PVM themed computer that could run majority of classic and model AAA titles. This was made possible by the Latte Panda MU. An x86 Intel N100 quad-core processor with 8GB of DDR5 RAM and 64GB of eMMC storage. To further expand the storage, we also included a 500GB 2.5 SATA drive with this setup. And yes, this setup can run Doom. We were able to play this game at 30 to 35 frames per second, which is respectable considering that it is being run on a single board computer. We also ran the Elder Scroll 4 Oblivion, which is an action role play game developed by Bethesda Game Studio. The game is set in the frictional province of Cyrodiil, part of continent of Tamriel and features a large open world that players can explore at their own pace. Because this game is so old, the quad-core processor and the 8GB of RAM of the Latte Panda MU enable it to run properly at 60 plus FPS on the highest setting. Aside from the computing power, this device was modeled after the design language of the PVM to create a vintage 80s, 90s looking computer while having perfectly modern hardware capable of handling most tasks. It can run CAD softwares and even some newer games like Doom 2016 and more. We created the design in Fusion 360 which was then exported into many parts that were eventually 3D printed on an Ender 3 printer. We are using Latte Panda MU paired with the light carrier board in this project. The Latte Panda MU is an x86 compute module featuring the new Intel N100 quad core processor, 8GB of LPDDR5 memory and 64GB of onboard eMMC storage. This board is small powerhouse. The Latte Panda MU x86 compute module features an Intel 100 quad core processor with 3.4 GHz turbo frequency offering ample performance and multitasking capabilities for majority of applications. Equipped with the Intel processor N100, the Latte Panda MU compute module offer multi-core score of 3115 and single core score of 1217 on Geekbench 6. Outperforming the Raspberry Pi 5, the Intel Celeron N5105 and Atom X5 Z8350. Its CPU performance double that of Raspberry Pi 5. This is great feat considering that its size and the cost, which is slightly higher than the Raspberry Pi 5, but it's still less than x86 based boards. This is a compute module, meaning the board doesn't have IO expansion port. We need to pair it with two available boards from DF Robot. A light carrier board and a full function evaluation carrier board is available. Here, we will be using the light carrier board, which comes with variety of expansion ports such as USB 3.0 port, Ethernet, PCIe 3.0, M.2 M key, M.2 E key, HDMI and also a standard PCIe 3.0 X4 slot, which allow user to easily expand various peripherals such as graphic card, sound card, network card, etc. As for sourcing the components used in this build, we got a proper Latte Panda MU kit containing the MU compute module, heatsink, fan setup, and the light carrier board all from DF Robot. Check them out for all sort of electronics related products like modules, sensors, even SBCs from their site. This project was themed after the Sony PVMs or professional video monitor, which were manufactured in 1980s and 1990s. To be specific, we took inspiration from the Sony PVM 9L2 monitor and modeled our PC by following the Sony PVM classic design language. The Sony PVM series is renowned for its high quality display capabilities and it's higher regarded in various industries, especially for broadcast and video production. Our design incorporated the Latte Panda MU current computing capabilities while sticking to the PVM compact size and aesthetic characteristics. This blend of classic design with the new technology is an exciting combination for various applications, from retro gaming to video playback and more. The project design began with the import of step file for the screen and the Latte Panda into the design. 
the screen were then positioned at the front side and the latte panda io port side was positioned at the right side we later made the design around the screen and the latte panda setup this design was loosely based on the sony pvm 9 l2 monitor we modeled the design in parts which were the following one of the main function of the front section of the design is to hold the screen in its place this is made possible by the 6L brackets that are fastened to the screen borders. Since we have holes in the interior where the M3 threaded insert will be added, this L screen bracket are mounted using M3 bolts within the front section. The other half of this model is the back section which is the same as the front section. This portion has an opening that we created and it's covered with another grill part. Magnets which are additionally positioned on the back side hold this grill section in place. The idea here was that we could simply remove the grill part and view the latte panda via the opening in the back section if we need to get a closer look at the setup. We then design the frame section which link the front and the back section of the assembly and it is an extremely important element in the design. The frame section was built out of five separate L-shaped extrusion or beams, four of which were put in each corner and one at the bottom side. On two of these beams, we have attached the latte panda and created mounting bosses onto which we will be adding M3 threaded inserts. Additionally, all the beams, front and rear faces have threaded inserts attached to them, which are used to fasten the front and the back section together. Once the design was finished, we used 1mm nozzle and transparent PLA to 3D print them all. We modeled three covers for three faces, left, right and top. These covers have grills that were designed to resemble the PVM design and to let air flow through the Latte Panda heatsink fan. The right cover acts as the opening for the I.O. whereas the left cover was designed only to fully cover up the face. The top cover also have an important function which is to hold the handle assembly. All three covers were exported into mesh files and then 3D printed using marble PLA. The accessories include the name tag, the accent parts, the stand part and the handle holder. For this project, we have modeled name tag that will be printed in two colors. Next came the accent part which consists of two items that were modeled after the Sony PVM and positioned next to the bottom frame beams. These parts have exact same appearance as the PVM front face. The pair was then 3D printed with transparent yellow PLA. The device appears slanted due to the two additional parts that raise the design from the front side at an angle of 7 degrees, which are part of stand section that was created and placed on the bottom side of the design. Furthermore, we have created a handle part that is positioned on the upper cover. We have modeled two holder covers that holds the rubber handle in its place and we use a rubber handle that we salvage from an old hot air reflow station to create this handle cover. The Latte Panda MU is a small compute module which means we have to pair it with its light carrier board in order to use it. We need to properly place the Intel processor heatsink with the fan on top of the MU by lining up the mounting holes with the heatsink screw pillar that are included in the box. Next, we join the MU by the heatsink through the provided M2.5 bolts on the back side of the MU. The Latte Panda MU is then inserted into the sodium socket of the light carrier. Two PCB standoff are also positioned on the light carrier and their function is to permanently secure the MU using two 2.5 bolts. The Latte Panda MU setup is now ready. Now this is an interesting little adapter, the M.2 to SATA dual port adapter. It is designed for devices that have an M.2E key or M.2A key for general use but no SATA port. We are using this device because we want to use a SATA SSD with this setup. DF Robot respond to our request for this module for the project and send one unit. The adapter was positioned on the Latte Panda M.2E key slot and fastened in place with the included M2 bolt. 
the assembly process start by first adding m3 threaded insert on all of the frame extrusion parts here we use a proper threaded insert t18b bit which was secured to our hako soldering iron after picking the m3 threaded insert and positioning it over the holes on the frame section we use bit to press the insert down melting the surrounding plastic and securing it in its place we add threaded insert on all the beams by following the same method. We next repeated the threaded insert additional procedure for the stand portion, using the insert bit to add threaded insert on both sides. On the interior face of the front section, we have installed 6 M3 threaded insert. The purpose of these inserts is to mount the L screen holder there. The process is same. After picking and positioning the M3 insert over the holes, we melt the plastic surrounding it and secure it in its place by pushing down with the soldering iron. For this project, we are utilizing an official Latte Panda 7 inch EDP display that we got from DF Robot. I utilize a different version of this display in my previously built Latte Tosh project. But this version of EDP display is only compatible with the Latte Panda MU and Latte Panda Sigma. The assembly process began by first placing the display inside the front section. Next, the L screen holder brackets are then positioned in their proper location. We mount the L bracket in their place with 6 M3 bolt. We add a few hot glue dots on the corner, which will securely fasten the screen in place and prevent it from moving. The Latte Panda is first fastened with the M3 bolt to the left side beam. It is then positioned on the two frame beams. Next, we secure the Latte Panda by tightening the bolt with the PCB standoff attaching the Latte Panda in its place with the frame beam. We achieve this by using two M2.5 bolt and 45mm long M2.5 PCB standoff. Two small M2.5 bolt are now used to attach the SATA SSD on the SSD holder. The SSD is then positioned on the top of the PCB standoff and it's fastened in its place using two additional M2.5 bolts. The Latte Panda with SSD setup is now ready. But what about the power source? Can you guess where we can acquire consistent 5 volt? Our little 2.5 SSD needs stable 5 volt to function properly. The USB port output can easily power the SATA SSD. So we connect the red 5V wire of salvage SATA power connector from an old PCU to the USB port 5V pad on the back side of the light carrier board. Two black wires of SATA power connector will be added to the ground of USB port. Now that the SSD is plugged into the SATA power connector, it will power up by the USB port and begin to function properly. Additionally, we add the SATA cable to link the Latte Panda with the SATA SSD. Now that the Latte Panda assembly and the front section are positioned correctly, we use two M3 bolt to fasten them together. We attach the EDP cable to the Latte Panda MU connector after fastening them both together. And we attach other half to the screen connector. We use some Kapton tape which will hold the cable in place and prevent it from moving. This rocker switch function more like a push button rocker switch that can be used to replace the momentary push button than your typical rocker switch which can only disconnect or join the conducting path. 
This will turn on when the user compresses the switch knob, otherwise it will turn off. There are two push buttons on the Latte Panda carrier board, one for power and other one is for reset. We first place the rocker switch on the slot given on the front section. Wires were then attached to the Latte Panda's power button and connected to the rocker switch terminal so that the two buttons would be connected in parallel. The front section is then fastened to the other frame extrusion parts. The left bottom extrusion part is added first, followed by the left accent part from the front side. The right accent piece only need to be positioned over the front section and tightened along with the extrusion using the M3 bolt. Next, we use M3 bolt to attach the upper right side extrusion to the front portion. Following that, we use the same M3 bolt to add the top left side extrusion with the front part. Magnets hold the grill in place with the back section. For this step, we need 8 magnets in total. We will start by splitting them into pairs of 4 and each pair will be attached to the corner of the grill and the back section. Magnets are all pushed into the holes on the back section and the grill. With no need to unscrew anything, this method enables us, the user, to quickly and easily remove the grill cover and have a quick look inside the computer. We mounted the back section with the frame extrusion using 5M3 bolt. Now that the assembly of the back section is ready. This is the current result. The model is almost completely put together. The basic assembly procedure is completed by connecting the front part, frame and the back section together. All we need to do now is to add handle, stand assembly, cover and logo to complete the setup. Here we took a rubber handle that was salvaged from an old SMT reflow and we model its two holder or covers which were installed with the top cover keeping the rubber handle in its place. To secure the handle cover with the rubber handle and top cover, we use two M2.5 bolts. The top cover is now added and fastened in its proper location using the four M2 screws to begin the cover assembly process. Next, we install the IO cover on the right side frame and fasten it there with four M2 screws. In a similar manner, we attach the final left side cover to the left side frame part, securing it with 4 M2 screws to the frame extrusion. Subsequently, we attach the 3D printed name tag to the front side by using super glue. Finally, we use two M2 screws to fasten the stand holder to the model's bottom side. Next, we use M3 bolts to attach two extra stand legs to stand left and right side. This model inclined angle appearance result from the additional stand legs, which elevates the model a bit from the front. The model is now completely assembled. Here's the result of this straightforward build. An all-in-one PC with the new hardware inside that somewhat resembles the vintage PVM monitor. We will be using a standard 19V 4A laptop adapter for power, which simply connect into the Latte Panda's carrier DC socket. The visual aspect of this project was successful. So now let's evaluate how well the Latte Panda MU performs by putting it through a few games. We ran a couple of games on this device and the result was pretty good. For example, we got 30 to 35 FPS in Doom 2016. We got 60 plus FPS in Elder Scrolls and 60 plus FPS in Bro Force. The Latte Panda MU's computing capability, which can easily handle anything, allow PVM Panda to run everything we throw at it.
One drawback of this device is it lacked Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on board. So we have to utilize the Ethernet port instead, which was not too awful because it supports Gigabit Ethernet, which is great for browsing. All things considered, this arrangement has classic aesthetic and can perform basic tasks and even run few games. While this project is finished for time being, I plan to add a GPU and sound system among few other minor interior adjustment. Check out previous projects on related topics on my channel. Stay tuned and I'll be back with a new project pretty soon. Peace out.